Alan Gerstel, Liz Quirantes, Sports with Rick Blackwell, and your Doppler 12 weather forecast with Chris Farrell. Live, this is WPECI Witness News at 6. A suspect is behind bars, but there is no peace for the people of Oklahoma. The death toll rises, hope for survivors is waning, and the search for another suspect continues. Good evening, everyone. The anguish continues for rescuers in Oklahoma City who are finding toys from the rubble of what was once a daycare center. But despite the massive effort, heartbroken rescuers have not found any children alive in the bombed-out wreckage of the federal office building. And Mother Nature has been little help. Stiff winds, lightning, and steady rain stalled work until mid-morning. With one suspect behind bars, the feds are still working at a fever pitch to locate a second suspect wanted in the deadliest terror bombing in U.S. history. Byron Harlan joins us live from Oklahoma City. The weather here is miserable, and that means rescuers are far less effective today than would normally be. There are 79 people dead, 150 are missing. The search is on here for survivors. There's also another search going on. That is, of course, for the man the authorities think planted the bomb, the second man they're looking for. We consider him to be armed and dangerous. Clues are what agents want as they search for the suspect known as John Doe number two. But it's a different story for the man who used to be called John Doe number one. He's right where federal officers want him, chained and handcuffed in custody. A strange set of circumstances landed 26-year-old Tim McVeigh in jail. He was pulled over for not having license plates. Police detained McVeigh for carrying a loaded pistol. It wasn't until a routine Social Security check that local authorities knew that they had their man. 30 minutes before he was to be released, he was handed over to the FBI. Leads regarding the second suspect may come from this man, Terry Nichols, who turned himself in yesterday and is being held in Kansas as a witness. Officers are also holding his brother, Jim, for the same reason. President Clinton spoke with a group of children during his Saturday radio address, promising that the individuals who planted the bomb will be punished. When we catch the people who did this, we will make sure that they can never hurt another child again. Recovery is on the mind of hundreds of people who survived the explosion, including this woman who was trapped in the basement of the building with water rushing in on all sides. I have to move on. I can't let it just tear me up. Donations to help both the people involved in the search as well as the victims have been enormous. We have been in this business a long time and we've learned never to underestimate the generosity of the American people. Wind, rain, and hail pelted the federal building today, slowing the work to find anyone who may be alive. There is a relentless commitment to the victims here. The odds are getting long that anybody here has made it, but the people here are not about to give up. Byron Harlan, CBS News, reporting live from Oklahoma City. Now back to you in the studio. Byron, this is an ongoing story, and there are a lot of conflicting uh, stories and information, but any idea, are the feds telling you how many people, how many suspects may have been involved? How many, uh, excuse me, can you repeat that, please? How, are the feds saying how many suspects do they think may have been involved? Still, too, you may have heard in the report that there are two brothers that are being held because they're material witnesses, but they're still going after the theory that there are two suspects involved, one who is in custody, one who's still at large. Byron, how are people there reacting to the news that this, these were not international terrorists, but rather people who are living in the heartland, people who could have been their neighbors? Yeah, there's been a change in that. As you know, some uh, Arab Americans in this part of the country, in fact, in other places in the United States, have been intimidated. They've been uh, receiving some threats in some cases. Now all that's changed. Uh, mostly fo folks here are focusing on now trying to get this whole thing passed, trying to come to grips with their emotions. There hasn't been a sort of acknowledgement that perhaps some folks have jumped to conclusion, but that certainly happened in this case in some instances. Byron Harlan, thank you. Reporting live from Oklahoma City. It sometimes takes a tragedy of this magnitude to show just how Americans can pull together in times of need. People around the country are using their time, abilities, and donations to help the victims of the Oklahoma City bombing, and people in South Florida are no exception. More now from Eyewitness News reporter William Giles, who joins us from our newsroom. William? Alan Liz, in the face of all of the terrible things people are doing to others, such as the situation in Oklahoma City, we are reminded that there is still a lot of goodwill in this country. A case in point is a songwriter and musician in Lake Worth who wants to use his talents to help the victims and promote peace. 
Like most people, Doug Lehman is devastated by the Oklahoma City bombing. The tragedy reminded Lehman of a song he wrote last year, which was inspired by similar tragedies in the world. We keep hearing on the news about this building was bombed, that building was bombed, there's a war over here, a war over there. Um, can't, can't it just stop someday? Let's have peace, let's come together. That's the message Lehman wants to get out to the world in the song Let's Join Together, a kind of a Beatles-style melody that includes a prayer for peace. Lehman recorded Let's Join Together in his homemade studio, and he plays all of the instruments in the song. And although Lehman didn't write the tune specifically for the victims in Oklahoma, he wants the victims to benefit from it if he ever gets it published. I'd like to donate it to where if it does make any kind of money, that the money could be donated to the people in Oklahoma. There are other ways people are trying to help the Oklahoma disaster victims. In De Jensen Beach today, the USS Trident, the Treasure Coast chapter of Starfleet International, held a car wash to raise money for the victims. Organizers say the decision was made to hold the event just hours after the bombing happened. The group will hold another car wash tomorrow at the Treasure Coast Mall from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. People are also donating money to the victims through the local chapter of the American Red Cross. If anyone would like to donate money to the victims, you may do so by calling the Red Cross at 1-800-HELP-NOW. You can specify where you want the money to go. Ellen, Liz, back to you. William, thank you for that report.